Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. It is so good to see you. I feel like a father whose children have come home. <laughs> it's been a while, but thanks be to God, we are together again. Amen. Uh, we are thankful that the Lord has kept us all, that he's been answering our prayers, and that on this first Sunday in April, even he's enabled us to come back to his house of prayer to worship together again. Amen. Uh, thank you and thank our trustees and deacons and ushers for their work, uh, both during the time when we were away from church and now. Uh, this All things today, uh, as far as I know, have run very smoothly. And we appreciate each and every one of you for making that happen. Uh, please tell your neighbors, your fellow church members, that uh, uh, everything's all right. They can come on back to church and uh, praise the Lord with us together again. Please, as always, uh, follow the leadership of our ushers. If you need them for something, just raise your hand. They'll, they'll come and they will assist you in any way possible. And when we leave church today, please follow their instructions so that we can leave there God will bless us to come back together again next Sunday. Amen. I feel led to pray for you today. Uh, we have already been led by our uh, leadership on some wonderful prayers, but I just feel led to pray. So, right, so will you bow your heads, please, with me? Yeah. Dear God, our Father, we are so grateful, so thankful to be back in this sanctuary, in this holy place again. So thankful that you've blessed each and every one of us and you've kept us in your care. So thankful for the minds of your children to come home today. And so thankful that you've met us here. Dear God, today we ask your blessings upon us in each and every way. Particularly, please bless those who are sick, those who are troubled, those who are dealing with challenges in life. Please answer the prayers of the righteous. God, today we pray that the Holy Spirit will hover over them and that it will move within them and where something is not right, that he will fix it. And where people are in pain, that you will take the pain away. And where there is disease, that you will eradicate it. And where something is trouble, that you will calm it. We just ask that you will move. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And above all, we pray for the unsaved, that you will speak to them and show them their need for Jesus Christ and salvation. We pray that this is the day that they will say yes to Jesus yeah. and open the doors of their hearts and invite him in and sup with him and know the joys of salvation. Oh Lord, bless this community, people everywhere in every house, and bless those who are homeless, and those who are hungry, and those who are without loved ones, and those who have no friends. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. You've been excellent in every situation, excellent when we were far from it, excellent when we were down and out, excellent when we were wondering how we were going to make it, and you still are and always will be, Excellent, excellent is the name of Jesus yeah. who went to Calvary and died for us. Excellent is the name of Jesus who got up out of the grave that Sunday morning. And excellent is the name of Jesus who ascended into heaven. Yeah. We praise you. We bless your name. Thank you for being here. Thank you for speaking to us. Now God speak to your child 
who still may not be feeling good, even though they're here in church today. Bless your child, who still may be worried, even though they've heard songs of praise today. Bless your child, who's still wondering how they're going to make it. Bless your child, who's still wondering, am I going to be healed? Remind them that you are God, and above you, there is not one other. And equal to you, there is no other. That you have all power and all knowledge. Bless your children today. Remind them that you keep us in the hollow of your hand. That you wouldn't allow anything to harm us that wouldn't be good for us. Remind them that you're still a miracle working God. Yeah, You've yeah. done it for us before. Yeah. Do it for us again. You brought us up before. Bring us up again. You healed our bodies before. Heal us again. You mended our wounds before. Do it again. You brought peace where there was no peace. Bring it to us again. Please do it. In the name of Jesus, by his stripes, we are healed. By his blood, we are covered. And we thank you for the covering. And we thank you for every blessing in his precious name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. God our Father, Jehovah, Jesus, Holy Spirit. We feel you in this place. We feel your presence. We know you're here. Your cleansing presence. Your loving presence. Your peaceful presence. For all things we say thank you. In the name of Jesus. Our Lord. And our Savior. Amen. And amen. six days Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother and bringeth them up into a high mountain apart mm -hmm. and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light and behold there appeared unto them Moses and Elijah talking with him then answered Peter and said unto Jesus Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their faces and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. All right, As always, when reading and 
considering the scripture, it is helpful for the reader or hearer to put yourself in the place of one of the characters of the text. Mm -hmm. When you imagine that you are speaking or you are hearing and seeing what's happening firsthand, it helps to illuminate the text and to spark questions and it stimulates you and motivates you to dig deeper into the scriptures. So in this text, in Matthew 17, which, by the way, can also be found in Mark's and Luke's Gospels as well, imagine that you are one of the three disciples present, either Peter, James, or John. You are a disciple of Jesus. You are one of his closest followers. You are with him day and night. You assist him in ministry. You are part of his movement. You are one of Jesus' entourage. You study him and his work. You observe everything firsthand. You are a student of his teachings. You follow him wherever he goes. You've seen Jesus draw crowds and you've observed him do miracles that bless many. You've watched him at the pinnacle of popularity and you've seen that others hate him. Regardless, you are committed to Jesus, this man from Galilee, who is leading what some would call a revolution and others a revelation. How fortunate you are, how unique your position to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What Jesus does is demanding, teaching and preaching, doing missionary work, and helping those who've been ostracized and restoring health to those whose bodies have been damaged by disease and disabled by demons. Jesus is everything from a theologian to a healer to a restorer of life and everything else that's good. In Matthew chapter 16, Jesus raised an intimate question to his disciples. Who do you say that I am? Peter gave that Holy Spirit-led response. Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus followed that by revealing his church when he said, Upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But then Jesus tells the disciples something disturbing. He reveals to them that he must suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised again the third day. In Mark and Luke, Jesus precludes this passage by declaring that there is a cost to being his disciple. All right. He said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's right. What poignant news. What a mighty big pill to swallow. Jesus says he's going to be killed. And then he says, take up your cross and follow him. Can you imagine what was going through those disciples' minds? You thought you'd heard some bad news. From that day forward, the disciples were thinking about what Jesus said. I'm going to be killed. You must follow me. I'm going to be killed. You must follow me. Our text today in Matthew 17 opens with these words. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, the brother, and brings them up into a high mountain. Yeah. I read that and considered the mention of after six days. 
I wondered what happened during those six days between the end of chapter 16 and the beginning of chapter 17. We're not told. Uh, we are left with a vacuum of time, a void of history over six days. I equate that six-day period with our time of absence from worship in the sanctuary here at First Cosmopolitan Baptist Church. I equate those six days with the weeks that we've spent in isolation of the gap of time. Not here together on Sunday mornings for worship. I read that and, and thought about how we did not gather in this room and worship God together for some time. We don't know what occurred in the lives of Jesus and his disciples for six days. But for us, we don't know what happened with our brothers and sisters sometimes for weeks and months short of phone calls and social media contacts and rare instances of just happening to run into a fellow brother or sister. Time away from here, from you, from worship, was sometimes straining. Not hearing the choir sing was sometimes disheartening. Not fellowshipping with one another was sometimes saddening. It was no fault of ours, but it felt different. Yeah. It was different, not being able to worship with one another in the same space. We're not told what Jesus did or what the disciples did during those six days. We're not told what they heard or what they saw. We're not told of their experiences for six days. We don't know if they were ministering or resting. We aren't told if they were engaged in something exciting or regrouping for the next home mission venture. But we are told what happened after the six days. Some of them had a mountaintop experience. Of the 12 disciples, Jesus takes three of them, Peter, James, and John, on a trip high into a mountain. And there Jesus was transfigured. His physical appearance changed. His humanity was overcome by his divinity. His person took on a divine illumination. He shone more heavenly than earthly. Mm -hmm. Christ's glory shined all about him. And in addition to seeing Jesus transfigured, the three disciples saw with him two Old Testament figures, Moses and Elijah. They were talking with Jesus. What a sight. Jesus transfigured, talking with Moses, that miracle child saved in a basket in the Jordan River by Pharaoh's daughter, raised in Pharaoh's house. Moses, that great leader of Israel who led them more than a million of them from slavery to Egypt through the dry ground between the watery walls of the Red Sea to the outskirts of the promised land of Canaan. And Elijah, that great prophet who condemned Ahab, who defeated 400 prophets of Baal, who increased the widow's all, who restored life to a dead child, who increased, caused it not to rain and later to rain, who prophesied the coming of Jesus Christ, and who did not die, but was taken into heaven on a chariot. What a great company for Peter, James, and John to be in. Awestruck by the presence of Jesus and Moses and Elijah, Peter says to Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. It was for those three disciples a spectacular moment. My brothers and sisters, that's 
That's how I feel right now. This is a spectacular moment. Yeah. It's good to be here. Yeah. It's good to be in worship with you right now. It's good to be in church on Sunday again. The best way I know to describe it, I'm glad to be in the service yeah. one more time. Yeah. I don't know how you feel, but I'm glad to be in the service one more time. <laughs> There's something about corporate worship yeah. that's uplifting. There's something about worshiping with the brethren that's exhilarating. There's something about being in the house of the Lord that's special. Yeah. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. The place of that meeting was on a mountain. Mm -hmm. We are here today on a mountain top of sorts. Yeah. There's nothing like, like being here high and Lifted up high above the problems that you left behind. High above the sinful state of the world. Oh, yeah. We're here today high above the forces of evil that wish you hadn't chosen to come to church today and join one another in worship of our God. Yeah. This worship service is a high mountain top experience. Notice too that Matthew said they were apart. Uh, they were apart from the worldly crowd. Uh, they were apart from the noise of the world. They were apart from the unpleasantries of the world. They were apart from the hustle and bustle of the city. Apart from the aggravation of their jobs. Apart from the taxing family duties. Apart from tense conflicts with other people. Apart from controversies over things that in the end are not so important. Apart from economic pressures of not having enough money to pay for what they needed. They were apart from sickness and disease, apart from accidents and tragedies. They were apart where they could focus on their leader, Jesus, the patriarch Moses, the prophet Elijah. It's good to be here in church today, apart from those things that had you down from tests and trials and yeah, tribulations. Yeah. It's good to be in the service one more time. Yeah. There in that wonderful atmosphere of majesty and worship on that mountain, Peter was struck to say to Jesus, Lord, if you will, let us make here three tabernacles. One for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Mm -hmm. A tabernacle was a tent. Lord, let us make three tents. One for each of you, a place for you to dwell, a sanctuary, a holy place. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, Lord, this feels like church. Let's build three churches for you. The Church of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. the St. Moses Church of Canaan, and the Elijah Grove Baptist Church. Peter was saying, Lord, church lifts my spirit. Church brings me joy. Church is refreshing. Church helps to renew my spirit. Church is a good place to be. Yeah. Let's build the church for each of you and, and stay here. Lord, we don't have to go back down that mountain. Just stay here in your new tabernacles and let's have church. Yeah. It's something about being in the presence of the Lord that, that makes you not want to leave. That's right, Pastor. Uh, let's make this permanent, Peter was saying. Let's make the good times last. Yeah. Yeah. Let's stretch out our stay. Go ahead, Let's sing another song. Yeah. Let's pray another prayer. Yeah. Let's read more scriptures. It's good to be here. Let's stay in church, Peter said. Don't 
give the benediction yet. Don't offer the closing prayer. It's good to be here. I'm glad to be in the service one more time. As Peter was talking, mm -hmm. a bright cloud overshadowed them. Yeah, cloud. On that mountain top, a voice spoke from the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear you him. Church is really church and worship is really worship when you are overtaken by a cloud by the spirit of the Lord. Yeah. Those disciples were just like us. Yeah. They couldn't see God but they could hear him. I hope you hear God today. I hope you hear him saying, welcome back to the house of the Lord. I hope you hear him saying, I'm glad that you're in worship today. I hope you hear him saying, it's good to see my children worshiping together in spirit and in truth. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in the service today. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm glad to be in the service one more yeah. time. Yeah. One more time. <laughs> about that time, James and Peter and John fell on their faces. Mm -hmm. They were afraid. Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. He touched them and his touch ease their fears. Yeah. Yeah. William Gaither penned the words of a song which said, shackled by a heavy burden, neath a load of guilt and shame. Then the hand of Jesus touched me and now I am no longer the same. Since I met this blessed Savior, since he cleansed and made me whole, yeah. I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while eternity rolls. Yeah. Then he said, he touched me. Yeah. Oh, he touched me. Yeah. And oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened and now I know yeah. he touched me yeah. and made me whole. Has Jesus ever touched you? Yeah. If he has, you'll never be the same. Yeah. His touch is like a breath of fresh air. Yeah. Jesus' touch will heal broken bones. Yeah. His touch will mend wounded hearts. His touch will cleanse both lepers and sinful hearts. Yeah. Jesus' touch will open blinded eyes and loose stammering tongues. Yeah. His touch will save your soul and it will make you whole. His touch will move mountains and it will give you the strength to climb others. If you haven't already, you ought to pray, touch. Touch me, Lord Jesus, with thy hand of mercy. Make each throbbing heartbeat feel thy power divine. Oh, take my will forever. I will doubt thee never. Oh, Lord, please cleanse me, my yeah, dear Savior. Yeah. Make me holy thine. Yeah. After Jesus touched the disciples, the scripture says they opened their eyes. Uh -huh. And they only saw Jesus. That's the way it ought to be on the mountain when you're worshiping the Lord. Mm -hmm. He's the only one you see. Yeah, right. He's the only one you worship. He's the only one you hear. Yeah. He's the only one you reverence. He's the only one you praise. Because he's the reason that it's good to be here. Yeah. He's the only one who woke you up this morning. And the only one who kept you. Yeah. Thank you. But most of all, he's the only one who went to Calvary yeah. and died for your sins. Yeah. That's why he deserves our praise. Yeah. What he did at Calvary is why yeah. it's good to be here yeah. and why I'm glad to be in the service one more time. As I close, 
I must tell you that Jesus did not allow them to remain on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Like us, they went back down. Down to the valley where they do ministry again. Mm -hmm. Down to the plains where life was filled with challenges and needs were still great. They went down to the mountain where Jesus would again minister to those who needed him. We must go down from this mountain yeah. and minister in our communities, telling the world that the Savior has come. Yeah. That's right. That he's paid for their sins and he's knocking on their doors. Yeah. Yeah. I found it intriguing. And reason for rejoicing. When I read in verse 9 of the text, and when they came down the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Uh -huh. What an amazing story of what they witnessed on that mountain did Peter, James, and John have to tell. Uh, they've seen Jesus transfigured. They saw Moses and Elijah return from the dead and, and talk with Jesus. Nobody at the bottom of the mountain will believe this. Uh, can't you hear them? I can't wait to tell this. They're going to be surprised when we tell them what we saw. It's what they were thinking. But Jesus told them not to tell anyone. They didn't say anything. Probably because they were so stunned when he said, don't tell anybody what you saw. But I'm sure they were thinking, what you said? <laughs> don't tell anybody. How can we keep this to ourselves? Mm -hmm. We just had the most marvelous mountaintop experience that anybody can have. And Jesus said, don't tell anybody. We saw maybe the greatest trio since God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And we're not to tell anybody. Truth is, Jesus didn't say, don't tell anyone. He said, don't tell anyone until after the Son of Man is risen from the dead. For a while, the disciples couldn't tell it. They couldn't tell it, but I can. All right, all right. Uh, they couldn't tell it, but you can. Yeah. That's why I'm so glad uh, today that I don't have to keep this to myself. Yeah. I'm glad today that you don't have to hold that in, that mountaintop worship experience. Oh, we don't have to keep it secret. Yeah. You can tell it wherever you go. Yeah. You can tell it at home. Yes, sir. You can tell it on your job. Yeah. You can tell it in the street. Yeah. You can tell it anywhere and everywhere you want to that you met the Lord at church today. Yeah. You can right. tell that you were in his presence today. You can tell that you heard him speak today. Yeah. You can tell that he touched you today. Yeah. You can tell that you worshiped him today. You can tell that you were glad to be here. You can tell it because that time has passed. That event has occurred. Christ is risen from the dead. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. You don't have to wait. He is risen from the dead. You can tell the world what the Lord has done for you. Yeah. Yeah. You may have said you weren't going to tell anybody, but you can tell it. Because he is risen from the dead. Yeah. I know that today is not Easter Sunday, but I can't wait until Easter to tell that Christ is risen. Yeah. Yeah. He's risen. Yeah. He is risen from the dead. That's why I'm glad to be here. That's why when I hear of the goodness of Jesus yeah. and all that he's done for me, yeah. my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. I'm glad. I'm glad. Yes, sir. 
to be in the service. That's all right. One more time. Oh yeah. I heard the choir sing that song early in our service today about how glad they are. Yeah. We sang with them that we're glad to be here. Yeah. Uh, there are different versions of that song. There is also a contemporary version. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. But you know, there's a there's a, a version that I haven't heard here in Wake County, and I haven't heard when I went Fix on the up, internet to, Fix it up, to look for it. Yeah. It's a version that I heard when I was a boy in church, growing up through church, and, Come on, and the saints used to sing it in Northern Granville County. Oh, I like that. Doc. They would say, "I'm glad to yeah. be in the service one more time." Thank you. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. That's all right. If my father was here today, these are the words you'd hear him say. I'm so glad to be in the service one more time. If my mother was here today, One more time. I'm glad to see your face. 
one more time. Yes. All right. I'm so glad. Thank you. 